Hello, my name is Michael O'Malley. I'd like to talk to you now about the old and the new lecture videos. And this is just a short video just to highlight the differences between the two. Okay, so there's three things I'd like to talk about. Uh, there's an old video clip that I'll show you. And then there's a, a clip from a new video for the same week's lecture that I'll show you, just short clips. And then there's a comparison of the two. Okay, and we'll really pull apart both lectures and both videos and really see what's going on and see what the advantages and disadvantages are for each. Down again. Um, ah, looks like there'd be light. Okay, so the topics of this week we're going to do some more GUI development. We'll look at logos, the drawstring method, colors, checkboxes, radio buttons. So, uh, lots, lots more GUI development this week. Uh, all very relevant for Summit 1. Uh, we'll look, look at Shudo's code and flowcharts, talk about those. UML and UML class diagrams. Hello and welcome to week four of visual programming. This week we do quite a lot of new material. Uh, we look at more GUI development. So we're using logos, the drawstring method, colors, checkboxes, radio buttons, and so on this week. So a lot of new stuff. We're also looking at pseudocode and flowcharts and what they mean and how useful they can be. Okay, great tools for helping you develop your applications, especially pseudocode. We'll talk a little bit briefly about UML and UML class diagrams. Okay, so let's take a deeper look at both of those types of videos and we'll pull them apart and see what's going on. Okay, so um, the old videos, uh, there's a screenshot from one of the old videos and uh, you'll see that I'm sitting in near darkness and the reason why I've got to do that is um, the big projection screen above me uh, washes out if I turn any lights on. Okay, so I've got to sit in near darkness otherwise students can't see the, the projection. Okay, um, I've got no idea what the camera's doing. <laughs> the operator for the camera's in another room and I don't have a clue what the camera's doing. Is it on me? Is it on my slides? Is it on the document camera? I've got no idea. Um, there's poor quality and very poor sound as well. So poor video quality and sound quality. Um, it looks like it's a night vision camera being used because the quality's so bad. And uh, I've even actually had to bring a desk lamp in with me um, so that I could see the keyboard. And you can see I've got the circle there, a desk lamp. And uh, that's where the, uh, the keyboard is, so that I can actually see the keyboard so I can use it during the lecture. Okay, so that's the conditions I was lecturing under. This is all in Building 6 in G3, uh, here on Rocky Campus. And that's the lecture hall that I've been given for the last, uh, as many terms as I can remember. Uh, that's where all my lectures are, so uh, it's not, not very good for these, for these videos. Okay, uh, on to the next slide, another screenshot for the old videos. Uh, we can see here that even when there's big fonts on screen, it's still hard to read, it's still low quality. Okay, not really good enough at all. Uh, and then when you move on to slides with small fonts, which are very common in programming lecture material because you've got to display a lot of programming code during lectures at times. Not every slide, but some slides. Uh, and they're in terrible quality, uh, impossible to read. Okay, so um, overall, the, uh, the old videos were a pretty lousy experience for the viewer. Okay, uh, when we move on to the new, the new videos, um, we think, see things like uh, sexy animated intros with music. Okay, having a little pop-up picture and uh, the title screen and a nice little animation going. And all of that's provided by a Camtasia Studio. It makes it so easy to do. Okay, um, on the introductory slide there where uh, we, can, we can see that we're in full control of the camera. I can change your talking head size. I can, I can change what's on screen, I can reverse back and do things again if I want to. So you're in full control of the presentation. Um, it's great fun to do, really good fun to do once you get started. And uh, it's a new skill that you can, you can add to your bow as well. Okay, so it's uh, fantastic all around, so empowering uh, these videos have been. And uh, on the next slide, uh, we can see that we've got uh, excellent quality, uh, very easily readable. Uh, we've got big pointers that we can use, big mouse pointers. We've got attention grabbers like the pop-up captions that I've got on screen there. 
and as well as that I've got something interesting going on I've got the talking head down the bottom there I can put the talking head wherever I like and whatever size I want but I've got I, I always keep the talking head on screen during these videos uh, so that the students never alone I'm always there with them on the journey I'm their wingman to, to, uh, to be with them during the journey okay so even if they're in remote Australia or somewhere really remote uh, I'm still there with them on screen okay and I think that's quite nice too students really appreciate that uh, there's a slot there's a slide with really small fonts and uh, you'll see that the quality is still excellent this is a screenshot from my video this isn't a screenshot from PowerPoint okay so it's a screenshot from the actual video of my PowerPoint um, and as well as that the the new videos are half the size of the old videos so they're easy for students to watch and download because they're only half the amount of size or, or half the bandwidth to to download okay and for students on um, limited broadband plans uh, it's not going to chew up any more broadband than's needed so it's chewing up half the broadband the old videos did so that's good news as well and uh, one final slide there some more advantages uh, the students really appreciate the new videos um, by using these new tools you can explore other types of videos for example tutorial solution videos assignment marking videos um, personal videos for students where you're just responding to their individual questions for a true question for example and so on so um, they're good for that way um, and during these videos you can focus just on your presentation you don't have a live class to worry about so it's just you and your presentation so it's just you and the people who are going to be viewing it at, at the end when it's all recorded uh, if you make a mistake or you want to change things it's easy to redo okay so there's lots of lots of advantages for the new videos some disadvantages you got the time to come up to speed on the product for example Camtasia uh, is what I've been using and this extra work there I've got the extra work in quotes because really at the end of the day I don't think they are extra work okay I think the benefits the students get out of the videos uh, and the, the, the reduced frustration students will have because they'll be able to learn thing, th things easier and have better quality materials um, I think the that's going to save time in the long run you know, reduce your support costs uh, reduce the number of emails because students will have much much better materials to work with and as you can see I'm a huge fan of this approach and the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages far outweigh okay so for me uh, I think these new videos are just so so good such good quality so useful so many things you can do that the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages okay I hope you enjoyed the presentation that's all for this video <laughs>